Okay. Uh, so fourth and probably final for now uh, tutorial part. Uh, so this one uh, will be more user oriented, less developer oriented, and idea is to to cover mainly how how somebody uses Elasticsearch and uh, and Kibana. Now uh, this this is not. Uh, we won't really do it in, as a tutorial just for, for these two, but we'll, we'll try to describe how, how things uh, how things are done from from a scratch. So uh, most of you already know this page. Yeah? If if font is too small, please tell me. You can also interrupt me at any time you want to ask any question. Yeah, I know Harry. We have probably an hour, so so feel free to ask. So we, we'll start with this page. It has almost all the data that, that you need. Yeah? Uh, if there is something which is not covered, let me know, I'll add it. Uh, so let's, let's first go through some basic details. Uh, this uh, whole idea of, of uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana is, is in, to, to have data in one place where it's easily accessible and or most in data where it's easily accessible, where everybody can make any kind of plot uh, he wants and or, or compile a dashboard in, in one hour and for everybody else to be able to use it at any time later so that we are not repeating any analysis or anything. So, so that, that's basically the idea. Uh, first, let, let's start with, uh, with some elementary stuff. So Hadoop cluster uh, there are several of them. We, will, we mainly use Elixadoop at CERN. If you need account, request it here. Yeah? Uh, everybody in Atlas has, as soon as you get access to a cluster, you have access to the data. Doesn't matter which cluster you are using, you still see all the data. We, we already covered last week uh, PIG uh, and, and how to get data in PIG, out of PIG. Oh, sorry, in, in uh, in Hadoop and out of Hadoop cluster, so that, that we already covered. Uh, there is a video, it's recorded, you, you can find it uh, on YouTube, uh, and, and there is a link here on this page uh, for, for both previous parts of, of this tutorial. Uh, now, a few words about clusters. Uh, so just to make sure that everybody who, who was not in this business before understands. So we have... Uh, Hadoop clusters and we have Elasticsearch clusters. Not all data which exists in, in Hadoop exists in, in Elasticsearch and also not all data which exists in Elasticsearch exists in, in, uh, cluster, in Hadoop cluster. Yeah. And the way how data comes in uh, differs. Yeah. So, but uh, if data exists in both places, uh, then it's guaranteed to be the same thing. Okay, so uh, Hadoop cluster you use to just uh, get data, for example, from Oracle or from, from uh, Active Message Queue or, or somewhere, and then you, you run MapReduce codes using PIG or, or Java or whatever. But the idea of, of Hadoop is, is to use it for, for longer running tasks where analysis is more complicated, where you have to derive and calculate all kinds of variables. Elasticsearch and, and Kibana, it should be used for data which is already uh, prepared in such a way that you, you know what, what you need, it won't change much, and you, you make scripts which continuously update uh, or indexes new data in Elasticsearch, and, and this data is then available for everybody. So, uh, and, and mainly, you, you don't now take a few files and put them in, in Elasticsearch. It's, it's not like that. Uh, we, we make all data which is important. We make sure that, that it goes there, and then it, it can be analyzed by it. So, uh, as I said, we, we have several Elasticsearch clusters. Yeah? Uh, one is at CERN. Uh, it's uh, called AI Analytics Cluster. And it has five virtual machines. It has a lot of uh, 
space on this, but this uh, are remotely accessed, so not very fast. And be prepared to, to wait a bit. Uh, and not majority of data is not actually there. So th there are a few tables which are there, uh, but the uh, largest part of the data is at uh, Elasticsearch at Clemson, and that's the one we, we're going to be using. And that one is, is really fast, and uh, already a lot of people made all kinds of dashboards there. So, so that, that's the one we're going to be using. Now, that one uh, is uh, accessible at this page. Eh? So that's uh, access to, to Kibana. So just to let you know, Kibana is, is just a, a nice graphical user interface on top of, on top of Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch, oh, let's start with Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is, is basically just a search engine just like Yahoo, like Google, like whatever. It, it takes uh, data, you send it, indices, indexes it, and then you can quickly search for them. Now, uh, there, it, most of it is just based on, on REST interface. So uh, you can do all of it, all, all operations with Elasticsearch, you can do uh, by just doing uh, posts or gets or uh, deletes and stuff like that. So everything you can do just using curl if you want. Yeah? But then there is also a very nice Python interface, which is really, really simple and can be used both to insert data, to delete data, manage data, uh, and, and to extract data to, to search using your Python script if you want. But for, for most users, the most useful part will be just using Kibana to to directly show plots and, and stuff. But if you need, you will see, Kibana is not, it doesn't have too many different plots. You cannot do some more fancy calculations in it. Uh, so for these cases, you will be able to write, a, a, for example, Python script to extract data from, from Elasticsearch and then show it any way you want. Now, since, since uh, there is all, everything is based on this REST interface, who really wants can make a, a nice web page uh, and show, uh, which will still be using as a backend Elasticsearch, but then showing plots uh, in, in whatever way he wants or she wants. So that, that uh, we will still have to, to, to need. Yeah? As soon as we need, we will we'll do it and, and how that's done, I'll describe here. Anyhow, so uh, before I start, yeah, uh, let's just finish with this last search at, at, at CERN. Yeah? So it is accessed on, on, on this website, so AI Analytics 01 CERN CH. And uh, because I'm outside of CERN, uh, I have to, to, use, uh, to use a proxy, but uh, for Kibana, Kibana is, is always open, and it's always at port 5601. And normally it works. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it doesn't work at the moment. I don't know about you. Uh, but but that, that's the port where you normally get it, and then there is a single sign on in front of it, and, and then you, you just directly use it. Now, when... And it comes to to Clemson. Yeah, uh, it's this uh, CL Analytics at dot uh, mwt two dot org five six zero one. So that is given, and uh, this is what you get when, when you just directly go there. Uh, there. There are two more things that you might want to know. Uh, one is uh, not only Kibana. Uh, exist on this cluster, but also there are other tools which which can tell you more about cluster, how it works, what are all the data which are indexed, and so on. One is called Marvel, and can be found here. So here you, you see that we have, for example, almost 3 billion documents indexed in it. How many search uh, such as we have per second, how many 
documents are coming. So almost at all times, we have more than 3,000 documents coming in. And I say documents, that's what in regular kind of databases you would say raw. Yeah? Uh, it's just that, that here, because uh, this is no, no SQL kind of thing, uh, you can have uh, much more rows or more complex documents, like, for example, full JSON formatted documents and so on. So these, these are machines, you, you see them here, and how easy they are, and indexes and stuff like that. So, so that's, that's Marvel, and then there's uh, HQ. Let me just show you that one. So this is how that one looks like. And I'll show you why uh, this can be useful. So uh, just to let you know, for uh, Kibana, everybody has access. It doesn't matter where you're in the world. For Marvel and and, uh, and Kibana and uh, HQ, because these two can delete data, uh, access is limited to CERN and to, to University of Chicago. If you need access to some other place, let me know, explain why you need it, and, and I'll give it to you. Uh, it's protected by firewall, so just so you know. If, if you also want to access this from, from other place, you have to go for proxy. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you why you might want to need uh, HQ, and that is that is this. Uh, here you 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 can view what are mappings of different things, but we'll we'll come back to it later. So let, let's come back to to Kibana. Eh? Uh, Kibana. As I said, it's just a, a graphical user interface. Uh, oh, actually, better not. Better, let's not go now to Kibana. Let, let's let's first see how would you work with Elasticsearch, uh, uh, either from command line, either from from Python script. So uh, I actually wrote somewhere here a page about it. Uh, very very simple, simple things. Uh, Elasticsearch access using API example. So uh, this this one is uh, in curl. Yeah? So if, if you just want to, to do it through, through a command line, and you see it's not that only you can uh, ask for for kind for document yeah, and search uh, filter documents out or, or filter documents in. What you can also do, you can use aggregations in flight. Yeah? So you can aggregate the data so that you don't get millions of rows back, which would take forever to download. You can say, I, I want just some of these uh, variables where, where uh, these cuts are applied yeah? and, and stuff like that, or, or even more complicated kind of aggregations. But, and basically the idea is you, you, you say curl and then post, you give it the server name. Now, now, pay attention that this is different port now. This is port always 9200. And, and this is open at CERN, it's open at University of Chicago. So, and then you, you say which index you want to search, or what are all the indexes that you want to search. Uh, so you give it with a, a star. And then you, as a JSON formatted uh, document, you give it what's your search, yeah? and this is how one search looks like. So it, it's it's not very complicated. For example, this this one returns size of uh, or number of all jobs grouped by by cloud. Yeah? So this is this is already quite quite interesting aggregation. It's something that, that you could use for for quite a number of things. Yeah? Uh, and and but that's basically how it, it looks from curl. Now you could do the same thing in Python, where you you just install this Elasticsearch uh, module, and then uh, you basically import it. You you uh, you create a client, which is again the same the same host, same port as as before, and basically the same kind of document you prepare, JSON document, which you run against. This, this index, for example, and and, and that's it. Then then you, you print your results back. Uh, now, 
Oh, it is interesting to, to know here, because this is a search engine. For example, if you are searching log files and stuff like that, you you also get ranking with your documents back. Yeah? So for each document gets a ranking depending how well it matches your search. For example, if you are looking for, I don't know, uh, for string error in your, in your log record, uh, you can first get uh, results where error string appears most often. Eh? So, so results are also run, and, and, and that's very nice for, for some things, like, like searching for logs and so on. Eh? But basically, you see, API is really simple, and you can do very powerful things with it. Of course, for more complex examples, just, just look at the Elasticsearch page. Now, uh, there, there is whole thing about how you index your data in, in Elasticsearch properly. Because there are a lot of ways how to do it wrongly, uh, and there, there are right ways to, to do it. Uh, so here I describe it, but we, we carried this, this last time. So if, if you, you want to add data to Elasticsearch, uh, it's described here, or, or watch the uh, story of from last week. But basically, <laughs> what is important when, when you are importing, indexing documents is that you, you give it a certain template so that, that it knows what, what kind of fields are you, are you sending to it. But that, that's, that's different. Now, now let, let's go back to really what, what uh, most of users need, and that's, that's Kiban. So Kibana has the most important things at the top here. So uh, there, there are four, four tabs here, and one where you, you select the time range. So uh, most of the data, or, or practically all the data, you can consider all the data. Every row has a timestamp, and you select them which data you want, you have to select by, by time. Yeah? So, for example, you can do quick, relative, or absolute times, and I usually use some smaller time range when I'm just uh, creating dashboards and so on, so that it might turn around this, this fast. So I, I usually put it a day or seven days or something like that. Anyhow, so uh, this, is, this is seven days. Now, let, let me explain... Uh, and, yeah, it's interesting when, when you have a dashboard that you want to put, I don't know, on a monitor in, in your corridor, you, you can also set auto-refresh so that it auto-refreshes every um, five minutes or so. Yeah. Now, now let, me, let me go through, through these four tabs here, yeah. uh, most important ones. So, Discover is, is one which you use to, to just investigate what you have in the day. So uh, here you select data that you are interested in, indices that you are interested in. For example, this is job archive. So that one con consists of, uh, it, it's basically a copy of Oracle table, job archive table. So here you have most of, of the data about uh, Panda jobs. So there is 106 columns of, of, uh, in each record, so it, it's rather huge. And you, you should keep in mind that last three days, we don't have data here because it's copied from Drawback. Uh, and so, so that, that's one. Yeah. So I'll, I'll explain you briefly uh, all data that we have here, but, but let me just first explain this part. So here you have what are all available fields in, in this data. And you see that some of them are numbers, like kind of priority, some of them are times. Some of them are, are bytes, some of them are they, they are different kinds. Yeah? But default format for, for last search is string. So, uh, and then here you can, uh, you can just inspect individual records. Yeah? So just, just click on one of them and, and you get uh, what, is, what are all the variables and, and you, you get also what was original JSON in which it, it it was received and stored. But you don't have to, to do that yeah, in most cases. So, but, but this part is really important if, if you want to, to really investigate individual records. Yeah. 
you, you see something suspicious in the plot, you just click on that part of the plot and, and come here and, and see records which, which come in, into that bin of that plot. Huh? That, that's really nice thing. Okay, and not only that, you, you can you can do already some some interesting stuff here. And you click on any variable, it will just quickly look at first 500 records and and show you what what's what's in it. Yeah. You can also visualize it from here, but uh, we will come to visualization in a second. Yeah. So so that's discover part. So let me now just briefly explain a few kinds of data that we have in this cluster. This is drop archive, as I said. So you, you see quite a bit of jobs. Uh, then caching, that's something for tier two uh, caching that we are planning, that we are testing. DDM, this is uh, something brand new, uh, thanks to Federica. Uh, we imported this from Russia and we will be importing it every day. We are importing uh, dumps uh, of all the all the data sets uh, on all the, the clouds uh, from Russia. And so if you want to know where the data are or how they are distributed and stuff like that, this is the place to look here. This is uh, how one record looks like. So basically, uh, you, you have data set name, data set size, uh, what's the scope, what's uh, at which site, at which uh, Russia storage element uh, it is, and so on. Yeah. So that, that's something very interesting and which will still be mining a lot. Uh, yeah, just starting. So then uh, you have all the FTS data, all the FTS transfers. That's, again, relatively new data. And you now, now this data you get immediately, like uh, 10 seconds after after that's done, you, you have it here. So there is no delay of any kind. But you basically, for each, for each transfer, you, you get uh, interesting things like uh, where it's when it was subscribed, when it started, when it ended, at what rate it was running, uh, what was source and destination. So uh, a lot of things here to be in mind yeah, and to be understood. Uh, then, except FTS, you have uh, all kind of uh, Russia logs. Now, this is mostly important for, for really roots, you guys. Yeah? So they use this. They made some very nice dashboards to, to check how Rusi is working. And then there is uh, data on, on uh, network weather. Let me put it this way. So here there is uh, a, a lot of data for uh, coming from Persona. Uh, and this tells you uh, what was uh, there are three different types of documents in, in each of them. Uh, so except source and destination, which you would expect, uh, there are also, uh, because we are not collecting only from Atlas, there are, there are other, ex other experiments too here. So so you can see uh, what is uh, what is one-way delay, what is uh, packet loss, what is throughput, and so on. And so, again, a lot of important information that's going to be used uh, mainly by, by networking guys yeah, to understand what's, what are problems there. Then there is Russia popularity and uh, XAD monitoring. Now, uh, XAD monitoring is, is, is this thing where we send data uh, from from all users' jobs, uh, what they read and, and uh, how many events they went through and, and, and so on. So, so that's, uh, that's also interesting for for some kind of analysis. Now, that, that's, that's roughly what data is in and, and how you just browse through it. Uh, now, let's go about visualized part. Yeah? Uh, so, in visualized part, this is where you, you make... Ah, yeah, I forgot to, to mention that. So, when, when you make... You can make some kind of selection here. For example, Let's see what we're going to take. Uh, let's take, uh, I don't know, DDM date. And I'll, oh no, let, let's go to job date that everybody knows. So, for example, here I can say, um, 
I can select only jobs from Camera Cloud, for example. Yeah, let's let's do this. Way. So we'll search for all the jobs where prod the username is is Ganga Robot. So these are all Camera Cloud jobs. Just to check how many of them we have. By the way, you you can do this all at the same time. Cluster is strong enough to to support how many doesn't matter how many searches we are doing. Yeah. So so here all all Hammer Cloud jobs. So you see that we have uh, basically uh, six thousand every every three hours. Yeah, so two thousand per per hour, uh, which is quite a bit. And now you, you can inspect only these these records yeah, and see whatever they are doing. You can combine here things uh, like you can ask for something more in, on top of that here. For example, uh, let's add one more request here. Sorry, Ria, I miss you for a few minutes. I am in visualization. How did you select the the job from Panda? Sorry for interrupting you. So here, here you select uh, what kind of data you want to access. Yeah. So here you see it's written job archive. Hmm? If you would want uh dumps, you would select this part here. And then you, you see only variables from, from that index. So to select from job archive, you just go here and click here. Does this answer your question? No, sorry, I'm still. Okay, I'm looking for in visualization. Okay, so you can. No, not in visualization, you will go to discover. Ah, and discover, because I heard you in yeah. the visualization, I'm looking there, and I miss you for a few minutes. So you are yes, yes, yes. to discovery. Okay, yeah. so you start from there, and then you go to visualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just let, let um, me cover a few more things here in discovery. Yeah. So okay, okay, these, I would. On each mm -hmm. of these tabs, you, you have this this line here, where okay. you, can, you can select smaller part of data, you can filter data in, yeah? So as as I've shown, this was how would you select only Ganga robot jobs? Yeah. Ah, okay, perfect. Now, yeah, now if you don't want these jobs, as people usually don't, they they would put not in front of it, and then it would show all the plots which are not um, Hamakal jobs. Now it's important these boolean uh, operations you should put always in capitals. Now. You could add more to it. For example, let's say end. So all non Ganger, non, non Hammer Cloud jobs, and for example, computing site to be, I don't know, university to. Is that the, the variable name? Let me just check. Computing sites. Ah, you, you see, it's it's with Anali. Eh? So what you can also do, you can use, you can do like this, where you put star, and it will take all of them into account. So it's going to take all. Computing sites with, which contain in them university tools. No? So this is a very powerful tool here that you have. Now, when you pre-select some data, what you could do if you're going to be using it often for for multiple visualizations, you would want to save this search. Yeah? So there there are icons here to create new search, to save search, or to open existing search. So let's save it as. Tutorial one. 
Uh, what is it? This one. Ah, studio search. Okay, so now we saved it, and and late, later you can use it to for and creating visualizations. Now, now let's go to visualizations. So uh, you would first click new visualization. So you click the plus there, and and then select what kind of visualizations you you want. This is area chart, data table when you when you want big table with a lot of numbers. That's the one. Line chart, very convenient for for, for a lot of things. There is quite a number of options. Uh, Markdown is, is something to to use. It basically gives you. Oh, oh we, can, we can just go one by one. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's do Markdown. Yeah. So here you you type whatever kind of description. This is what you would like to to use uh, to describe. What is your dashboard? Yeah? And then just put this visualization in the dashboard, and then you explain what are units, or, or where data comes from, or, or what you should learn from this dashboard. Yeah, you can put links. You can you can put all kind of stuff in in, in here. And so there, there is this full language. Uh, you you can do all, all kind of uh, HTML stuff here. Yeah. So so that, that's that visualization. Now now. Uh, Data table uh, is is like this. Yeah? So you you can start either from new search or from saved search. And this time let's start it from saved search. And we will look for the one we just made, which was tutorial search one. So now already we pre-selected this data, and and then for example you want to split rows according to so. You, you can split either table, either row. Yeah? So we will split this in rows of, for example, terms. Where term will be, let's say, uh, prod username. Yeah? So to see what are top five users in University of Two. Yeah? And so these, these are their usernames. You can put this to be top 10 or whatever. And then for so by default you get count of, of all the jobs here. Uh, but now, for example, I want not only count of jobs, but I want a few more things. So you click, basically this part, upper part is what's normally on your y-axis or, or what you are aggregating over. And this is what you are splitting over. So, Let's say I want another metric which will give me uh, sum of CPU times that they that they spent in hours, and you click here and you get it. Wow, this guy really spent a lot of time at our, at our site, and this is this is very recently. I'll have to check if these are really hours or something else. Anyhow, so, uh, or for example, you want to, to see what's the average CPU efficiency. So in that case, you just add one more metric. You say that you want average and the CPU efficiency. Okay, now you also see CPU efficiency. And you see that people differ quite a bit in the CPU efficiency. And, and so on. So here you, you put... In, there is quite a number of options, so you can choose count, average, sum, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, unique count, percentiles, ranks. So, so that that's one. Uh, let's save this one as I don't know tutorial visualization one. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah, can I can I go one step back? I yeah. am uh, I'm in the visualization part. And I would like to find this uh, McFiden. Uh, I mean, I'm not able to... I am in the visualization part. I have a saved search. How do I add the metric? The so right here, metric? Here, the, the, there, is, there is this small icon with plus on it called new visualization. So we, this yes. is a new visualization. You did this. You want a table, for example. Yeah, yes, yes. And I'm in data table. Yes, I'm there. Yes. Yes. And then, and you, then from, from there, a saved search. 
Yes, sir. You can do either from new search or say search. Let's go from the say search. And then here you just type to yeah, yeah, or, 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 yes. you, or you search through, through all these uh, tabs here. Yeah, but it's okay. faster if you just tutorial, search one. That's the one we saved. Yes. You click on it and that's it. So now okay, you have count. search. You, you have count. Perfect. And now yes. you want to split rows, for example. Per, ah, okay, thanks. Okay. Per term. Now, there are, you can split in different ways. One is uh, by dates, one you can make history or range, or, or you can filter. You can filter, for example, exactly that user. Uh, so, no, 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 so I wanted, I wanted, no, 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 I wanted that one. Keep okay. me on that one. If I okay. one, then terms. I, then I. So, terms, and then terms of which column. Yeah? And that column we, we were showing was producer name or something like that. Let's find it. Producer name. I got it. And then let's say top 10, and you have it. You press here to, to reload, to apply changes. Okay. How do I apply? How did you say I apply? I just click enter. You, well, either you click enter or, okay. or press okay. here, apply changes. Oh, now I like it. Yeah. Oh, I found the Josh, finally. Okay. <laughs> Great, thanks. No, no, perfect. Yeah. So, so okay. that's one visualization. And then when, when you satisfy how it looks, you save it. Now, let's, let's go back and, and uh, do, uh, let's do line chart. Again, from, from the same state search. Let me find the same search. So it's, it's here. Now on X axis, what I will, will show is date. And here for, for date, I choose creation time. There are more times, yeah, like end time, modification time, and so on. But let's choose creation time. Doesn't it? And so now I will want, for example, uh, to get uh, 10 to, so that, that would, would just give me a line. Yeah? Uh, but now I want to split these lines per user, yeah? for example, the same example from, from before. So uh, we will use here prod username, prod username, top five users. Now, now we, we get in time, how many jobs they had. So that's McFadden, this green one. Now, but what this shows you is, is number of, of jobs he had. Now, for example, I, I want to do something more, to know a bit more about these jobs. And I add on y-axis, not only to show me uh, not only to show me number of jobs, which you read out on, on y-axis, but now I want also to, to change its, its dot size. And dot size, let's, let's make dot size to represent uh, CPU or time he used, yeah? or every user used. CPU consumption time. So now you see that uh, dot size tells you, and when you put your cursor on it, you, you see how many, how much CPU time he spent in this time period, uh, in this bin of time. So now you have two informations or three informations in one plot. One is for each use. So first, this is selected only on on university two side, and this is for one user. A very big one, and it shows you how many jobs he had in this time moment and and how much CPU time uh, it was spent. So so that's that's one example. Now let's let's see some let's let's put, save this visualization as. Sorry, sorry. Can I can I sorry? I yes. I'm still there. Um, thanks. I am almost there. Uh, I have the count. I have the sum of CPU consumption time. 
I wasn't able to change the plot. How did you change uh, from um, the table to the uh, to the lines? You went uh, again. You didn't change. Uh, uh, you you have to make new visualization. Yeah? New visualization. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. 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 So that was line chart. Markdown. This is description. And we'll save that one too. This tutorial is free. Then uh, metric is is just a one of your big numbers. Uh, if you really want to emphasize something, yeah. so let's say to, uh, they'll use the same search. Now this will show number of jobs and will add uh, total sum of sip of wall time delivered and total of CPU time delivered. Now for most of these things, yeah, uh, you, you really have to know what's going on behind. Yeah? Uh, what this data really means, because uh, it's not so obvious. For example, we are seeing that uh, sometimes you see CPU time larger than wall time, and then you have now to, to, to understand that, okay, there, there are multi-core jobs and so on, which, which count differently. So, so it's always good that you know what's, what's in the data. Just blindly making uh, plots is not really an option. Uh, so we'll save this one too as visualization four, and then uh, pie chart. Now, Federica is expert in pie charts. She should tell about this. Uh, she makes them beautifully. Yeah? Like you, you have to have some sense for, for beauty to to do these kinds kind of things nicely. Seriously. So you split slices, for example, in again according, let's say, to to, to users. Uh, user name. So these are five biggest users. Let's make fifty biggest users, and and then you can split it even more. Let's say. It is split it <laughs> the input file type. Let's, let's try that one. So now you see what kind of data different people use yeah. and how much. So so this McFadden used mainly hits and then uh, event files, and then AOD files. So give him a call. He shouldn't be using it. <laughs> so, uh, this guy used only AODs and so on. Anyhow, very, very nice. And you can make five levels of these if you want, and there is quite a bit of options. Yeah? And then uh, you can make these slices to represent whatever uh, counts of jobs or CPU times or whatever. Now, we'll save that one too. So, so that's pie chart, and there's tile if you if you want to make a map. But uh, up to now, we don't have any any data with, with, uh, with for that. And very versatile, uh, just a standard. Okay, uh, no, from. What did you select? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, vertical bar chart. Yeah. I'm save search and and here I'll show again just so you you see. Uh, let's make a date and split bars according to terms of. Uh, you 
düşünüyorum. So, so, so these, these are now jobs, again, number of jobs, depending on the user, in time. Uh, uh, sorry, no. So, I so you get it. time? Okay. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, I'm there, uh, I'm there, but I just need uh, the, second, the second split. How did you... You so add the sub -booket? First, First one is on time, yeah, to, to, to get yes. to x-axis. And then I split each bar, so let me okay. repeat. So, so this, this would be just first split yeah, on time. And then you do add sub bucket. Now you can either split chair or bars, uh, and, but you don't want uh, 100 uh, charts. So we split on bars, and here we select terms. Okay. And then prod user name. And let's say we, we show top 10 users. Now, how you select what is top 10, you, you either do it uh, by count, or you can do some, some more fancy metrics, like uh, top 10 users in, I don't know, CPU time or whatever. And then you simply apply changes. And, and now you, you, you have how many jobs in each time interval each user has. And, so let's save this one too. May I, may I ask? Uh, may I ask one? Um, since we are playing with the number, if I uh, imagine that I would like to see from these numbers uh, the max RRS, RSS used uh, in the last 15 days by any of these jobs. Yeah. So if if that's just one number that you would like to see, then then by, you would uh, per day per day. So for each day, okay. Then then yeah, they, they would do uh, like this, yeah. Yes, exactly. So so we'll keep this. But yeah. now uh we don't split bars and okay. here on y axis we don't want to show count, but we will change this to show max. I like it. And then okay. uh RSS what's his max. name? Max RSS. Max RSS. Yeah. So it that uh, maybe it will well, have a problem. Somebody used 57 megabytes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Because, oh, just a second. Why, why yeah. this is so well, small numbers? Because I think there is a factor three, but this is not the point. Okay. Okay. I'm very surprised with this number. Yes. It doesn't look. No, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, there is a factor three. I'm not. There is a factor yeah. three. Yeah, but even three. factor three, like 150 megabytes, that's nothing. Sorry, I'm saying that the number is reported in kilobytes, but, uh, but we kilobytes. don't take into account. Ah, okay. This is a multiplier. So this if by you... 1, by yeah. 1,000, this is a reasonable number. Yeah. I start liking it. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. I, I wanted to see a real use case for uh, this. No, no, that's... Okay, thanks. Thanks, Ilya. Go ahead on your tutorial. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, so that we, we went through the visualizations. Yeah. Now we come to a part about dashboard. Dashboard is trivial to make as long as you have visualization. You you basically press here to add visualization, and then search for visualizations that we made, and then just click on them. Close this here. And, and now you organize them any way you want. So let's put this one here, make it larger. Here is description. And these are uh, these big numbers, which you can make smaller if you want. But, and let's make this table larger. So, that's the dashboard. <laughs> you save it as tutorial dashboard.
and you want to store, for example, time with it. And, and that's ready. So what you can do with it is you can share it. You click on this icon here and then share a link. Now this link is rather large. Yeah? So please don't send it to people just like that. Uh, you can also embed it in, in your website. Yeah? So you just copy this iframe in, in your website and it's it's there. Uh, so I, what I usually do is uh, I, I shorten these links using this shortener. And, and then send only only this part. Uh, or just tell to people, okay, my dashboard is called tutorial dashboard, just go there and open it. Yeah? So at any time you, you just go here and then open the dashboard. Uh, now a nice thing about these dashboards is that, for example, you even this dashboard is here, yeah? you can still, uh, it's still interactive, so uh, you can do further selections on this. Yeah? So, for example, uh, now this dashboard is, is fixed to Midwest tier 2 yeah, because that was the search that we made. All these visualizations are based on a search which looks for non hammer cloud jobs at Midwest tier 2. But I could have made that search to be only for non hammer cloud jobs and not put that Midwest tier 2. Uh, part. And then I would here just change and put uh, additional search that my uh, computing site is, I don't know, Anali University 2. And that would give me my site. And you would notice that in the link here, that 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 search, that filter, is saved. Yeah? It, it's rather long link, but oh, maybe uh, yeah. So if you look here, you, you see that filter, that query. So basically, by just changing this URL, you can change a dashboard or may customize it for, for that site. So you don't have to, to make one for each site. You, you just make one, and then just by changing URL, you, you change which site you are looking at. OK, so, so that's a nice feature that you, you'll probably need yeah, at some point. Uh, what, what else do we have to cover? Uh, now settings for the most things you you won't be needing, uh, but for example here. So if we go to settings uh, here is uh, if there are some new data where you you say uh, you make uh, an index pattern. So all the the indices which which fit the pattern will be accessible as, as a one one data source. Yeah? And let me show you how one of them looks like. So this is job archive and and this is what is everything in in these what are all the columns in, in this uh, indexes in these indices and uh, it shows you add what is type of the column, what's the format, what is it analyzed and what is it indexed. Now for example, uh, I what I do here often is I say uh, input five bytes. Uh, I, I say that it's in bytes, and that you can change here. Yeah? So and and here you also change how it's displayed. There, how many uh, digits after after the small point and so on. Yeah? Uh, so that that's one thing. Other thing is that if you need additional field, which can be calculated from existing fields, uh, then you can do it here. Yeah? So you define a new scripted field. And here I defined three, three more scripted fields. And there is whole language how you define them. But, but basically, the simplest way is this one. 
Yeah. So, for example, I define the total job time to be queue time plus wall time. So, time job spent in, in, in the queue plus time it was just running. Yeah. And and it's really easy thing to do. Uh, these fields are a little bit slower to show, but you 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 probably won't notice the difference uh, in most cases. Yeah. So so. If something can be calculated quickly on a flight without some very fancy operations, for example, you can do operations on strings. That's a limitation. So if it's with numbers, with time, then you can do it. So feel free to use this and nicely document this. Whatever you, you created scripted fields, please make give them some nice names and, and document it on the key page. Uh, Additionally, please, whenever you save, because now, now we all share the same cluster. Uh, we already have hundreds and hundreds of visualizations. Please, uh, when, when you do your project, always start uh, your, your searches, your, your visualizations, your dashboards, always prefix with, with the name of, of your project. For example, all of these that I've made today, I am started with tutorial. Uh, so it's easy for me to later find them and delete them. Uh, if you want to delete objects or, or, or stuff that you, you made, you do it here. So for example, we want to, you can also change existing things. For example, I, I want now to change that search that, that we did before. And I just look for it. So I found it, and here is, is to see it, and here is to edit it. So you can either edit it in this way, which is not really convenient, or you just view it, change it here. For example, I will remove this requirement of computer inside to be just T2. Run it. Oops. Wait one more. Run it, and save it over the old one and that's immediately changed so uh, that's how you change things and you can delete uh, here dashboards searches and visualizations you can edit all three of them please don't edit things of other people <laughs> uh, what else did we miss something uh, maybe uh, I'll just show you uh, some of these, some of dashboards that, that people did, uh, and which are mainly much nicer than, than the ones I'm making. Mm. So this is the, the, from this morning. <laughs> this shows uh, Susie usage. And let me see one of uh, personnel, for example. Visualizations. This one shows personnel data. This and let's look for Russia. This is Russia. People make really nice ones. Oh, they have even one with as a map. And with nice explanation on the side. So let me see there were some questions. I should have been addressing them. But I don't know how to access it. Can somebody tell me if there was some questions on the video? No, I have it open. I don't see uh -huh. any okay, questions. Then, then these questions were probably private ones. Uh, anyhow, so th that's, that's roughly it. It's no big deal. It, it's very convenient once you, you go through, through, through this idea that you go from search, visualize, dashboard, uh, and, and then you, you get a bit of experience with these uh, visualizations and you can do really nice stuff. And you can do it really, really quickly. So, any questions? I 
have one again. It's about the data that you are having. You said the 106 attribute, for example, for job archive. Um, yes. How how can I know which are and what do they mean? Exactly for the reason that you explained that sometimes making plots, if you don't know what. Now, by error, I knew that, by chance, I knew that max RSS was in kilobytes and not in bytes, but... Um, so you see, you see my you see my point, right? So when you have one, if you go to the discover, yeah. Okay. If you go, I go to, to discover, discover, yes. And then select job archive. Yes. And you let's say last seven days. Yeah. So here are all the all the columns that exist, and on each one of them you can do uh, just. Uh, yeah, I'm in job archive. I have all the columns. You can do add. And let me put all these like new when? variables in. Yeah? Okay. So now I edit uh, the, the new variables. Yeah? So only them are listed here. So you see average PSS, average RSS, average swap, average VMM. There, there are no, a few more. No, I didn't, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, this is nice, sorry. It's great to have it in the table. My question was slightly different. Is that, uh, um, these, as you said, uh, when we make a plot, it can be dangerous if we don't know what we are plotting. So, destination RSE maybe is clear. Job status is not so clear. So, what I'm saying is, do we have a place where we describe what are these? No. Okay. Unfortunately, you see, the underscore ID, underscore index, underscore type, um, and so on, right? Yeah. Okay. So for that know. reason, okay. I, I, I really recommend for each yeah. thing that we import, we, we yes. create a link here in this page, and yes. we describe. So the person who, 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 who imported, who imports it, he knows what the data. And so my, can describe my exactly... Yeah. How it's collected and, and everything. My proposal would be that uh, even, f for example, for this job archive, if we could have a, if we could have a simplified uh, or at least, a, I don't know, the five or ten most interesting attributes uh, are described at what they are. So, what I mean, what I mean is that in the tricky you have, uh, as you suggested, we can have um, data inserted, job archive. And then inside job archive, we have 106 attributes and more. Out of these, uh, these, 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 and these, these, and these, they mean this and that. That yeah. I'm not asking you to describe them all, absolutely, but maybe five or six or, se or seven or ten that are the most interesting one could be um, could be useful, so that people can then find them. And then for the others, I agree with you that whoever imports new data should describe what are the other the, the important Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to, to have, so for each, each time we want new data and we want to analyze, uh, you, you make here a sub-project, let's say, like, like this one, or this one, yeah. where, where you, you describe where data comes from, what all of it, it means, what are the dashboards, and, and everything, everything that is needed, so, so I, that that anybody can just go there, read about it, and combine with his data or whatever. I fully share your point of view. Okay. So we really need to ask, uh, uh, for example, um, Federica, uh, who now is in, uh, is connected, for example, she did uh, some interesting plots, some uh, nice dashboards and so on. So maybe what, uh, what, uh, what she could do also is uh, in this uh, sub, sub project at Wiki to add uh, the name of the dashboard she created and the link or the name of the saved search that she did. That's more or less what you are suggesting to write. Yeah. In a way that we can add them again. FL analysis. Yeah. Okay. Federica Leggera analysis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because FL is widely yeah. known yeah. to be <laughs> Federic. <laughs> if, if she was... Okay. Okay. Ilya, thanks a lot. I'm I'm okay with my question. So this would mean that uh, the guys that are doing this, adding new things, they really need to be precise. Because otherwise, in one year from now, actually, in one week from now, we have forgotten uh, what is there. 
So, okay, thanks. Uh, uh, yes.